One of my favorite people to listen to on the old YouTube is Robert Sapolsky. If you're not familiar with who he is, he's a professor of biology and neurology at Stanford. If you're interested in science, like I am, this guy will provide hours of entertainment. Something that he talks about in one of his many lectures is this a gene, gene called, called Fox the Fox P2 gene. P2 gene. Now, you don't have to be a geneticist or someone that's heavily invested in science to understand this, but Fox P2 is quite interesting because it's what's called a gene homolog, which is basically a gene that is shared by two or more species from a common ancestor. In this case, we're talking about very old ancestors because the two species that we're interested in are us, Homo sapiens, and the house mouse, Musk musculus. Now you're probably asking, what's so special about Fox B2? Well, it has something to do with language. Instances in which we've seen damage to this particular gene have also been accompanied by certain language disorders. So in essence, there's a key component relating to language embedded within the Fox B2. Of course, if you know anything about homologs, you'll know that the way that the gene is in one species is not precisely the way the gene functions in another species. So what you can actually do is you can take the gene that would normally be found in a human, for instance, and you can uh, input it into mus musculus in this case. And when scientists have done this, they found that the mice actually start exhibiting more vocalization, enhanced vocalization. Now, this does not mean that this gene represents the only factor that contributes to enhanced language capabilities. Based on the reading I've done, it seems like people agree that this gene alone is not responsible for our evolutionary edge linguistically. Yet I love this example because it provides at least a small window into better understanding. And perhaps even more importantly, what about these mechanistic factors relates to the spiritual experiences that humans seem to have? It's examples like these that pique my interest as to wanting to know more about what exactly is going on with our species, what has been going on with our species, and how do we optimize our species for the future. I hope an example like this can pique your interest as well.